as I was to partying and working. I had very different parts, like segments of life, um, and I lived all of them excessively. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Michael Kazilny. Love and best wishes, and thank you very much for all your emails and saying good day in the street. We're all going through something at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Um, and uh, there's always beautiful people like my next guest who can inspire you. Um, Pia from um, Inspiration Place. Place. Thank you so much for coming on. My absolute you're so pleasure. Present. You're so present. You know, you're going to help so many people, and you've gone through your own journey. Yes, a and, huge uh, journey. Amazing, and uh, I think I read somewhere from trauma to triumph. Yes, I absolutely feel like that is part of my story. Yeah. So I had lots of different um, parts of disconnection and disbelief and not loving myself, not feeling worthy, not feeling deserving, not feeling enough. And I've had to re-meet all of those parts of me and come back into the wholeness of me. And from mm. that place, I feel like I can inspire people and That's I can beautiful. teach yeah. other people and I can share more from a place of really deep love because mm. I learned that love in my body oh you've done the work I can feel it you know I can feel it and um mm -hmm. and we're all sort of broken in a way aren't we but um when I read um uh, your bio you said you felt um you never felt good enough you felt um mm. unwanted unloved and of course you went through a difficult marriage I think and uh you know you got into the drugs and I think there was even a section when you were doing yoga and you had a bag of cocaine on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, I, at the time I thought I was really spiritual. Yeah. Um, because I was really committed to my yoga practices, I was as committed to my yoga and spiritual practices as I was to partying and working. I had very different parts, like segments of life. Um, and I lived all of them excessively, you know, like I was one of the busiest people I've ever met. I crammed a huge, I crammed yeah. a huge amount into my life. You were addicted to life. Yeah, I really, really was. And, and tell me about, uh, to summarise and clarify that growing, where did you grow up? I grew up in Glen Iris in yeah. Melbourne, mainly. Like, yeah. yeah, we moved a little bit around when we were smaller. But and then relationships, tell me about the relationships. Relationships have, uh, have amplified incredibly over the course of my life um my most you know my beautiful love of my life now wears is a uh, complete op polar opposite of what i started with and that's a reflection i guess of what i've learned about myself however when i first um my very first love we went out together for seven years i was in my early 20s and we had um, we both brought our own level of trauma to the relationship we, it was a very drug-filled relationship that was where we just partied non-stop the whole time and we both didn't know how to love each other because deep down we both thought we were both unworthy of the other. We both thought that the other was going to reject us. And so we came together and then we came apart and we came together and we came apart. And it was, yeah, it was a tumultuous whirlwind, really, honestly. And because the drugs keep you really busy and they, you know, there were so many fun times and we always had people over at our house, there were so many different distractions where we never had to really sit and learn each other's love language or their signals or how we could meet that other person face to face with no other substances involved. How long were you together? Um, cool. Just, well, we were together for seven years, but I think it took us like a good year to actually break up, like to actually finalize it. We kept coming back again and again and again. So yeah, finally, when we broke up, I actually went away overseas for three months on my own, and that was a massive adventure. And it was life, it was one of my life changing events. Where'd you go to? I went to South America Amazing. for quite a few months. And yeah. yeah, back then, I don't think that many female single travelers were really doing that trip on their own. And I went to Peru and Bolivia and Ecuador and Galapagos Islands. Amazing. And I learned Spanish when I got there, and I met some amazing people. And I finished off the last part of my trip in Europe, in Croatia. and. Um, I came home and I felt very different. Mm. Um, it didn't take me too long though to start partying again and moving back into habitual cycles of patterns and behaviours. You know, I, I had, I guess, moved countries and I sort of changed my lifestyle and then I came back home and my old lifestyle started imprinting back on my normal life. And so okay. got back into partying. Um, I met a new man. Um, maybe a year later, we ended up getting married. And about 15 months after we were married, we got divorced. And that was incredibly shocking for me. I was not the sort of person who mm. ever wanted to get married. I hadn't asked to get married. In fact, I think when we met, I was kind of like, I'm not the marrying kind. What was the attraction? 
Um, he was incredibly funny uh, and I do love laughing. I think it's one of the great joys in life is to have a laugh. Mm. And I think that when you're trying to hide pain, laughter is great medicine, mm. you know? And mm. so um, we also were just very busy. Our life was also a whirlwind. So there was always just some activity. It was very action packed. We were mm. going here, doing this, doing that. And again, all of those distractions meant that we never truly, really met each other. Mm. We never really, truly saw each other. Um, and I think in that situation, you can never hold another person in their fullness because you're kind of scared of, you're scared of actually that deep connection, that deep intimacy. Mm. Um, and that, that relationship, yeah, I didn't see it at the time. It was quite shocking for me when he came home one day and was basically like, I'm done, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And I'm the sort of person I, I love Kind of fully and deeply and truly and i did not want our marriage to finish and i thought that it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me i really was completely devastated and i tried everything in my power to not make it true mm. um, it was a defining moment for me though because i had a time where i said the only thing that i can control in life is my response to it and this can either break me and send me you know down into the depths of despair that i have traveled to before or I can change things from this point. And That's a good turning point. And was that um, relationship here um, fueled with drugs and alcohol? Yeah, it was to a slightly to lesser degree. to a slightly lesser extent, but it, it, they'd always been so present in my life. I, I mm. there, there's not many stages in my life until really the last. You few might talk years. about that decision to um, not to go down the uh, the pit mm. of self pity after the next break. But thanks for coming on, and yeah. uh, viewers, we'll be back very shortly with this beautiful uh, soul. From trauma to triumph, Pia's a beautiful soul. She's got great energy and she's so centered and um, content. Um, and oh, I think life's 10% what happens and 90% how we react to it. And we can either let things overwhelm us and, um, or we can get on top of challenges. And that point when um, you decided to split up or he decided to split up, and uh, that was difficult because you got married and then 15 months later it all fell apart. Yeah, and I think that getting married, I mean, on paper, it's like the greatest promise you can make to someone through yeah. thick or thin, you know, through every yeah. challenge, we will stay together. Yeah. And so I guess the depth of realizing that that's not true was quite shocking as well. And having to move into a space where I was far away from my family at that time, I'd bought a home that was nowhere near my kind of tribe of people. Yes. Um, and so I was quite isolated. We were also very broke. Um, Johnny had started a business down where we lived and we would poured all of our resources into that. Um, you know, I'd bought a house down there. Uh, we got married on my credit cards. We'd gone on honeymoon to Africa on my credit cards. So we mm. were, we were. You lived life to the full. We exploded. lived life to the full, and and I worked really hard. However, when we split up, I, I didn't have. Were you any... depressed then? Did, 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 did you hit rock bottom? Um, I I almost rock bottom. I mean, I've had many different times in my life where suicidal ideation has been very very present for me. Mm. So I used to kind of literally. I used to think it was so normal. I used to think that everyone had suicidal ideation. It wasn't until in my 20s I mentioned it to a friend one time and he said, no, Pia, people do not think about, you know, killing themselves or dreaming about killing themselves. That's not normal. Like, that's not okay. It sounds so, like Pia, you, was, um, you were so busy, you always had to be around people, always filling in time. Did you spend much time in solitude in those days? So when I split up with Johnny, that was my solitude time. So for the first time in my life, I wasn't near all my people. I was really by myself. I focused on my body, my connection to my nature. It was very lonely at the start, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And but that you... loneliness meant that I had to meet myself and I had to, I, I really, I wasn't doing all of the activities. I also couldn't afford to do anything. So, so life really put me in a position where it was like, you've got really not that many choices. What do you want to do with this? And so what I chose to do with this was learn how to go inside. So wow. I started yoga. Um, you know, I started learning about Reiki and energy and understanding more about my connection you to still my go heart. out and... Um uh, out socializing that sort of thing or well actually last night I was at a friend's party and I had one glass of wine and so I my lifestyle is completely different now mm. um, on the outside I don't think anyone ever really knew the depths like there was a few there was a handful of people that understood um, how how in deep I, I was with drugs and alcohol and other addictions and otherwise I had so many different masks and personalities and so much energy that I could party all night not sleep at all go to work 
go to you know a high level sport training event you know go out and party again go to work the next day I could just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and I mean that level of um, sleep distress in a body let alone all the substances that were in my body yes I was definitely severely depressed severe anxiety I just completely and you're so authentic it. now aren't you there's no social mask there at all uh, you know you know um, yeah, the more yeah. you get heart, the more I think the more times you've had your heart broken the more your heart opens up doesn't it yeah if you allow it to you mm. can either put the armor and the walls there yeah. and choose to never go in there or you can meet those parts of you that did feel that intense betrayal that intense hurt that intense grief that intense feeling of unworthiness and when we meet those parts of ourselves within and we recognize that we're here to stay like I am here to stay with my body I'm here to stay with my heart I'm never leaving and you're safe with me and I'm yeah. going to do as much as I can to to work together with you I started building that relationship so really really sort of um owning yourself warts and all and um and, uh, and I suppose being independent towards the opinions of other people that's important isn't it we're always yeah. worried we're always trying to um protect their self-image, was trying to justify and rationalise, but totally. it takes up I, so yeah. much energy, doesn't it? I teach about sovereignty and empowerment to people because until you actually know your own boundaries of your body and what your body feels on the inside and the signals of your body, how do you know what signals are right for you? How do you know if it really is a sacred yes to have this conversation, to look at this email, to take that job contract, to go on that holiday? Is it my mind saying that or is it a connection between my mind, my heart and my gut, like my intuition, my emotions and this and, you know, beautiful analytical logical tool that we've built over the course of our lifetime, this is a predictor and it's a predictor based on all our past experiences. This is a feeler, it can feel into the quantum universe and our intuition is our soul guidance. And so when we're more connected to the way these channels flow within us, then we're making decisions that are for us, that make sense to us, that are irrelevant of other people. And even if we might feel like we're letting someone else down, we're not letting ourselves down, we're not betraying ourselves. Like we are being the antidote to kind of like what could be seen as a poison out in the world otherwise. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. You've come a long way. Yeah. When, when, um, do you still get anxious now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. And I guess I'm so resourced now that what I do is acknowledge it first. Um, I do breath practices. I do meditation. I do movement practices. Wow. I have an amazing supportive tribe that I have built I guess through my heart connection yes. and that has made a huge difference to me so for a long time in my body what I didn't realize is that I didn't feel safe in my body to even connect to another person so what I had to learn first was my nervous system the regulation of my nervous system to shut down my hypervigilance to stop down my busyness if you're really busy all the time or you're not doing anything at all how can you be engaged with what the signals are in your body? So I had to relearn all of those things. I had to unlearn everything mm. and then relearn. And you've got a good tribe. That's important, isn't it? Yeah. Because quite huge. often uh, we have a lot of acquaintances, but we're just sort of filling in time, don't we? Yeah. So I yeah. have, I mean, honestly, I had so many friends. You know, I, I went out all the time. I, I was well known for a party. Everyone loved it when I came. I mean, mm. I was so engaging. It was so fun. I loved dancing. I would dance on the day, tabletops. I would dance all night, you know, and then I'd be <laughs> up again going, yeah, all right, let's have more. So people loved having me around but I never felt trust, trust, enough trust with another person to really connect with them. Amazing. And I always held them at arm's bay. And yeah. I felt like if they got to know me, they'd realise I was broken, that deep down, like, you know, I was a drug addict or I did drink alcohol all the time. Or they'd be some, they'd look at some part of me and judge me because mm. I was so busy judging me, I automatically assumed that everyone else would be doing the same. You're beautiful. We'll have a short break and then we'll find get, get some advice from you, some inspiration now we can connect to um, the people who are really important to us. We'll be back very shortly. Pia, I've noticed a lot of people um, uh, aren't smiling, they're not being kind to each other. It's turned into a very selfish, busy, hate-filled society, hasn't it? Even when you walk along the footpath, sometimes uh, 
so, saw this bloke the other day. Like yeah, and I feel like our governments um, and many people in politics have actually enforced this kind of level of segregation and judgment and fear in our society. Mm -hmm. And that we have, I feel like, lost a lot of our inclusivity and our ability to harmonise with others and our ability to connect with others. And obviously we've had masks, you know, we've had, you know, different mandates that have kept us really separate and really isolated. And I think in that isolation, it can highlight different fears that sit within a person and that that fear will drive a wedge between connection with another being and it will increase judgment and it will increase blame and shame and pointing of the fingers like it's your fault and there's a level of non-accountability when we're looking at other people to want to blame mm. for our situation or how we're feeling or our perspective and so I think that the the smiling and the unity and the harmony can come back when we remind each other you know like smiles are more infectious than viruses I like to say and so if you pass on a smile it's free it's mm. available you can have it on your face you know every moment that you're awake and it does make a huge difference to other people and so even just a level of smiling in your own eyes like we can smile through our eyes we can smile through our body frequency and that level of smile we have to find out on the inside of us first before we can smile at another mm. um, and so that comes down to the inner work, that inner connection, that ability to be with yourself and to be with all of the fears that have been highlighted over the last couple of years. Like Indeed. we've been in, in this accelerated, like, you know, crunch time that we've never seen, you know, so in humanity. So even people are going through some extremely difficult times right now in their personal lives or business lives and, um, you know, and and uh, they don't feel like smiling. It's still important to, mm. um, to go through those really tough challenges with a... Um, with a smile because sometimes uh, difficult times uh, nudge you out of the comfort zone don't they yeah forces you to do a, something that you wouldn't have done totally you know, leave a relationship or quit a job or move to another different country or something yeah and how I see it like I have definitely had lots of different things forced upon me at the moment and what I'm choosing to view it as is an opportunity you know rather than yes. me feeling that you know, delving into the depths of like despair and rage and anger and like this shouldn't have happened to me and being a victim of life, mm -hmm. how I've decided to choose to work with it is like, okay, I'm a co-creator. This situation is an opportunity. And for the last two years, I have been on an accelerated growth path. I have chosen to meet myself at deeper layers through the fear. And just like other people, I've had financial insecurity. I've had isolation insecurity. I've had relationship stress. I've had, you know, just normal life, you know, in a lockdown environment. Mm -hmm. And so... Being able to traverse those challenges meant that I had to meet new parts of myself, stretch my comfort zone of knowing myself. And from that, I can see more opportunity because I've got a wider perspective. If we stay really narrow in our own relationship with ourselves, how can you even look at what else is available to you? And so it's not to invalidate emotions. I've been through hard times and I have been angry and I've been sad and I have to grieve and I acknowledge those emotions and I just don't dwell in them. I don't let the density of them keep me stuck and stagnant. Mm. I, I allow some movement to come back That's in. That's beautiful. Um, so so you, we go through the rainbow of emotions um, um, and we acknowledge them. Yeah. And, um, but we don't um, uh, give them too much energy. Totally. So it's not about dismissing them or denying them or repressing them or suppressing them. It's, it's saying that, yes, you know, you, you, it's valid for you to feel this way. And it's not about being positive all the time. And you have to have a smile on your face. That's actually can invalidate parts of you that actually are like, actually, I'm angry and this isn't fair. And so being able to let that part of you have some air, have some acknowledgement and honor it and say, yes, I thank you. I recognize this is part of our journey. And we are safe enough and resourced enough to be able to focus on this particular perspective and to grow in this new area. So if you help that part of you feel safe to come along on a new journey, then you can open up a new door and look out a new window and be like, okay, that actually looks pretty good over there. Perhaps we could move in that direction. Perhaps I could read that book today. Perhaps I could listen to that podcast. Perhaps I could watch Michael's show. Perhaps I could actually listen to this and action something today because I'm not dwelling in you know, anger and hate and divisiveness mm. and fear. I've let them be there yes. and I've moved from them. That's beautiful, such great advice. Um, and 2022, you're, you're, you're still gonna help people. I know there's uh, challenges for you and uh, you've helped lots and lots of people, but how will you um, 
uh, help people in uh, next year? So yeah, my, my business is being closed down because I am being uh, choosing a health sovereignty path and not the path that the government is forcing upon us. And so that means that I'm taking my business fully online. So my business is Inspiration Place. I also do education under my name, Pia Kynock. Um, and I've also just registered a new business name that I'm going to be putting work into called the Wholeness Coaching Academy. And so over this next year, I will be putting in the depth of I've, I've learned from so many different masters in so many different fields like my certification base is incredibly wide and the ways that I can help people is a myriad of them and I want to share the knowledge that I've gained over the course of my lifetime and the breakthroughs that I've had and the tragedies and the triumphs that I've had in a way that um, is a beautiful journey for other coaches who want to help other people with the depths of their journey and the, the joy in reclaiming our wholeness, the joy of meeting our inner self and our higher self and our soul and being on a true, truly fulfilled soul purpose life mission where we are that light in the world that we all know we truly are, but we're often so scared of. We're like, what happens if people see me, know me? What if I use my authentic voice? Mm -hmm. So many people are scared of their own power. And for all your viewers listening, I know that there's a part of you that would be, and it's time to it's time to get to know that voice in your heart because you are the change that you're seeking in the world. And that's what I want to share with the wholeness journey, like meeting all of you and loving all of you. Mm, thank you so much. You're a beautiful soul. And viewers, thank you very much. Love and best wishes. Um, see you next week. All the best.